Obviously, United this week beating, uh, beating Italy's most corrupt club and now coming up against England. Do you know what? That, I, that derby. United. Fair. <laughs> 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 Every single of the seasons for FFP, we've been fine. We haven't had to backdate any checks or anything like that. I'll do any some dodgy moves where you pump money through a country and then through a company and then it goes to Manchester City and everyone's like, oh, what? Adam McCullough. Weapon. Here we go then, time for another preview on full-time Devils and today it is a relatively big one. United coming up against City this weekend. Um, I was dreading it a few days ago, not anymore after the big win against Juventus in Turin for United. Uh, joining me today, Statman Dave's here. This fella's uh, Adam McCola and uh, a comedian and big City fan as well. Alex Hilton is here. Uh, go and follow him on Twitter. <laughs> uh, right, let's get straight into it, guys. Um, obviously, uh, like I say, a few days ago, a lot of people really dreading this week, but a uh, big win against Juventus. Is that going to be the peak of our week? You asking me? I don't know. <laughs> It's like, yo... Uh, I have a conversation with a brick wall. First of all, let me just say, the victory against Juventus, I thought, was a fantastic win. Even at 1-0 down, I know they had opportunities to score the second, but I thought up until their first goal, which was an absolutely fantastic goal, we played pretty well. We were competitive in the game. Um, and I thought at half-time, either team could have won it in the second half. Obviously, Juventus should have been two goals up before we got a chance to make that comeback. But the fact that we did... Shows that there's a great spirit in the team and there's a bit more confidence there as well. Now, I want to get excited by that. But given what has happened before with Manchester United, not just under Mourinho, under the past two managers as well, every time I seem to think we've turned the corner, something will happen and we, we're, we're back two steps again. So I don't want to get carried away. But the fact that we've got a game against City coming up, I think is, is pretty good for us because we've seen a problem with the players that Sometimes they have a problem with keeping that consistency. They'll play great in a big game and then against, I don't know, a Bournemouth at home will struggle a little bit. But actually playing Manchester City away, it's another big game um, against arguably a better team, although possibly not, um, given recent form in Europe um, and, and, and over the last few seasons. So maybe that will keep United focused a little bit on this game. Um, we're not going into it expecting to win. We're going into it Yes, we can win, but hoping to win. And um, I think that makes me a little bit confident. But when you look at the way City are playing, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, they're playing absolutely fantastically. The scoring goals from all over. So it's hard to be overexcited and get carried away. But what a win in Turin. To be honest, though, and I don't want to be too negative about it because it was an incredible win. It did feel a little bit like Juventus never took it out of second gear. I disagree. I, really? I think they, they didn't take their chances. I think that's the difference. I think they had no countless opportunities. There, there was intensity because you look at the chances they created. Quadrado had one eight yards out, should have smashed it in, smashed it over. Dybala from the edge of the box. Dybala hits the post. How many times did they hit the post yesterday? How many times did they countless just letting times? us have the ball? And it felt like whenever they wanted, they, they were letting us. Switch and would grab I don't it. think they were letting us. I think the introduction of Ander Herrera into that midfield brought a new energy. And I think you look at Alexis Sanchez, you look at um, Lingard, who was very energetic. I think he, his, his energy went towards the end of the game, which you'd expect with him just returning. Um, Anthony Martial, absolutely fantastic. I thought we brought a lot of mistakes out of them. Mm. Okay, interesting points. Uh, Statman Dave, let's go to you now, mate. Uh, what did you make of United's performance? And also Jose Mourinho's antics at the end of the game. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what Alex has to say about that. But uh, Dave, what do you reckon, mate? His antics were great. Mourinho has already made it about him, which takes the pressure away from some of the players. Perfect stuff. But the performance, the result was good. United were good in spells of that game. Let's not get wrong. Like Juventus are one of the favourites to win the Champions League. So having spells of dominance against Juventus, which United had, yeah, Juventus had their spells as well, is really positive. And, I, you know, Adam mentioned, uh, you know, that Juve didn't take their chances. I kind of agree with that. There were some big chances that went that way. But United rode their luck. And then the changes from Mourinho, I think we've got to look at that mm. and think Mourinho did really well as well. Not only did he make the right changes, but he completely changed the game, bringing on Maro and Flaney in one matter. Like that double substitution, and in a situation where you're thinking, oh, this, is, this isn't going to do anything. And then you see the physical threat. You talk, you know, you listen to the Allegri quotes after the game saying, we were fine until Fellaini came on. And then he added that physicality that we just couldn't deal with. You know, there's that in the United squad that when Mourinho uses his weapons off the bench, it's very good. It kind of is so strange that at home, Mourinho didn't do that. And this is this weird thing with the inconsistency. Not only is it inconsistency with the players, 
But quite frankly, it's inconsistency with Mourinho because that was a fantastic Mourinho performance. But why didn't we see that at home? Why didn't we see him changing the game? But it was brilliant. You know, we've got to accept that United did well. They won the game. Martial was fantastic as well. I agree with Adam. Really good at driving it at Juve. They really couldn't deal with his pace. But a good performance. Going into a big week, picking up a win away in Turin, that is a huge result that will boost United's confidence going into the derby. And it's one we needed as well, because mm, when you look at the state of the group, especially yeah. when we're 1-0 down, um, mm. we were going into that, that game against Young Boys and Valencia leading two, two wins. wins. So we really did need to get that three points and it looked unlikely at 1-0 down, but... Mara won for Laney. Exactly, mate. You, you, you can't sit still when you've got that big friggin' idiot sat on the bench. <laughs> Right, moving forward, uh, Paul Scholes uh, did obviously criticise Jose Mourinho. We probably heard about it, so criticised his antics, um, typical from Scholes. You know that episode of Friends where Chandler cries for the first time? I don't watch Friends. Friends oh, right. Well, you know shit, that episode mate. of Friends where Chandler cries for the first time and then he can't stop crying after it? That's what Paul Scholes is like, you do know. opening his mouth, seriously. The guy, as soon as he started speaking, the guy just hasn't shut his mouth. Um, Friends is awful, guys. He's, uh, shut up, you. Uh, Paul Scholes said as well that United should be winning with a bit more class. Uh, Alex, what do you think about how Jose was? Uh, do you think it was a classy move? I thought it was I thought it was great to watch. And you know what? I'm funny enough. I don't actually I disagree with Paul Scholes. I think it's exactly how United should win. United, the idea that United went with class is a very, 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 very recent one. I think, oh here I think we go. Here's the dagger. Where where Ferguson loved to stick the knife and he stick the boot in. And do you know what? As as a Manchester City fan, you can expect I don't have a very high opinion of Jose Mourinho, but I have no issue with what he did last night. In, in ten years' time, if Pep Guardiola was managing Juventus and they'd be in Old Trafford at so United at Old Trafford, and Guardiola had walked over and given it uh, to United fans, I'd love it as a City fan. I think it's it's. Uh, it's, it's funny, it shows that Mourinho is still in touch with the fans at Inter. Uh, that it was yeah. on to stick it over to Juventus. And I quite like to see that. As much as I dislike Mourinho, and it, as much as it is classic Mourinho being an arse, it is what Mourinho does. And I think that's sort of a little bit what United needed. And it, to be honest, I've, up until that point, I've been looking forward to the derby this weekend. Uh, because I thought you know, United are coming, they're a little bit out of form, they don't look too lively, there's not much about them. And all of a sudden, you saw in that game, uh, Mourinho show like classic Mourinho, you know, with that it's just his back up and a bit of fire in his belly. And if that translates onto the pitch on, on Sunday's game, then United are going to give City some trouble. I do think that like sometimes the tribalism in football can go slightly too far. But we saw Jose in Turin, what he did at the final whistle. I thought that was just rivalry. He was I getting love that. He was getting stick all that's game. He gave it back. That's what football's about. I mean, yeah. even when we used to see Gerard give it the five fingers to United and. You just, like, you, you don't like it at the time, but you don't go moaning about it, writing letters to the FA, making complaints. I know, it's because pathetic. Because it's like, it's part of the game. We sing yeah. all sorts about players and managers and we say madness. Like, yeah. And then they do one little thing back and we get all like, well, not we, but some fans get really offended. I find it absolutely mind boggling. It's football, get over I it. Feel like and that's the Mourinho. I want to see. Exactly. Even mate. in his post-match press conference when he was calling out the FA, asking them to translate stuff and that. That is the Jose I want to see. I want to see you being a bastard to the opposition, to the opposition team, opposition fans, to the FA, to this, that and the other. Not to your own players and your own teammate and your own fans. That's what I want to see. And that's the Mourinho. I hope we see week in, week out. Okay, Dave brought him up before. Let's talk about Juan Mata. Scored a free kick, didn't start against Juventus. Um, I personally thought he probably did deserve to start the game. Uh, what do you think of Juan at the minute this season and what level is he at? Should he be in the team? Me or Dave? City? Me. I'm, talking, I'm looking at you. Okay, mate. cool. Um, <laughs> no, because you did say Dave before you answered the question. Yeah, so, guys, come on, man. You know, like, do your job properly and that. But <laughs> Juan Mata, um, I'm not surprised he didn't start because <laughs> I think tactically, Jesse Lingard starting was something that we needed. What Juan Mata doesn't offer is, he offers movement, yes, but not at the pace that, no, that a Jesse Lingard offers. And I think that press and that movement and that dropping into space um, in between the defence and the midfield helped us a lot in retrieving the ball back. Having said that, Juan Mata, when he came on, the guy's got 42 goals for Manchester United, scoring goals for fun. Um, no one scored more than him at the club. And... He's doing fantastically well for us when we need him. He was the catalyst against Newcastle, scored the free kick, which got us back into the game, got us going and got the win. Did it again against Juventus. And you think about like other times during his career at United, the FA Cup final, 
he was the man that leveled it up there. Mm. Um, he gets crucial goals for Manchester United Liverpool at game. crucial moments. He's an absolutely fantastic player. And post Fergie, probably been our best signing um, in terms of like you know what he's brought back to the club. Okay, I know this, this really says a lot, but how come he's not like nailed the place in the first team yet? Then this is because what confuses me. I thought he's been here this long. I thought he'd his either best position have gone is, or his, be in the first. His team. best position is number ten. We don't play a number ten week in week out. He plays on the right hand side sometimes, but his pace isn't amazing, so he doesn't play to his full potential out wide. And he's better when he drifts in. Um, when we've got a team with the likes of Martial, Lingard, Sanchez that are moving constantly and he can just rotate positions and drop deep and all that. He looks great. When there's no movement, it's when he doesn't look great. When he has to make that pace, when he has to insert the pace into the game, he can't do that. So when there's movement around him is, is amazing. That kaleidoscope of movement. Oh, I like that. That's a good like word. That. That. A few syllables in there. Uh, Dave, um, what, what do you make of Juan this season, mate? Why hasn't he yeah, managed to been, get in the first team regularly? I think he's, he's got to be in here. Like, you look at all the top performances United have put in in recent weeks. Juan Matt has been a massive part of that, whether it is free kicks going into the back of the net or you know balls over the top for midfield runners or wide players making the move inside. Without Juan Matt, United look sort of... They lack a little bit of sharpness in terms of the passing and the intricacy. All the good, quick passing moves that United have played in the last few weeks. Juan Matt is always the guy. Quick receive it, quick pop it off almost oscillating in that final third, popping around, moving into space. And I think that with the derby coming up, someone like Juan Mata, because of his goal-scoring record for Manchester United playing from midfield, for me, he's got to start. I'd be starting him ahead of anyone on that right-hand side. Just because I think without, without Mata, United lack a bit of a playmaker, a bit of personality in that mm. final third to get on the ball and go and be consistent. Let's take in the last... Four or five games, he's probably been United's most creative and consistent attacker. You know, Martial's got the headlines and putting the ball in the back of the net, and he's been clinical in those areas. But Matt has been making things happen, I think, so vitally important for United. United are always better when Juan Matt is in the team. Talk about the performance uh, against Liverpool at home and, uh, you know, the 2 1 win. Juan Matt had a great game there, drifting in on the outside, doing a defensive job on the right wing, as well as excelling on the counter attack. Of course, he can do it in the derby. Simple as that. Juan Matt has to start. Um, Alex, I'm not going to ask you about Juan Mata and, and whether, whether he scares you or not, but I am going to ask you about another player who, I mean, he didn't score, but he sort of caused the goal in Turin. Maran Fellaini, are you terrified? Uh, it's well, not even a joke. It's, it's not a joke. If you start the game and you see him on the bench, if you're winning 1-0, at the back of your head, you're going to be thinking, aren't you? Well, yeah, he's one of those players and he's very much a derby player. You know, for all of his sins, you can't, um, can't deny that he knows how to impact a big game, Fellaini. Am I terrified? Uh, no. I think United have got better players on the pitch, one of which is Juan Mata, uh, who I really rate as it happens. I think he's one of the uh, most underrated players in the league. I have to say that. I think there's, there's, there's better players in United shirts, and I think Fellaini is someone that um, City have come up against more problematic players this season already, uh, and will come up against more problematic players later in this season. We've got more, we're more than capable of dealing with a player like Marwan Fellaini. And I think it's sort of how. United have changed over the years that really a big lanky impact player is who you're pinning your hopes on. You owe it to yourself. Better boys, you don't need to rely on a player. So, so Alex, that. you're saying that when Maron Funny comes on 80 minutes to make his big M impact at the MTA Arena, you know, you're not going to be scared that John Stones and Laporte, two gone, flashy gone, ball players and drops, are going to gone, have to deal gone. with the big dominant Maron Fellaini in his wig. Well, presumably, but are going to do that? He We're going to have a lot better centre halves than you have at City. I think it's I think it's very cute. You think it'll be one 0 at eighty minutes? That's a, that's that, that's fair enough. But also beyond that, I also don't think you'll have enough of the ball. And look on corners and free kicks, and when he comes in elbow first and miraculously avoids another red card. Yes, Marouane Fellaini is a dangerous player, and we need to be aware. But ultimately, you've got to get him on the ball, and you've got to create those chances. And I, I genuinely think that City will play possession football as we do. And I think you know, if Marouane Fellaini is your, your, your big weapon. I, I really wanted like I, 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 I really wanted a center like like a big a big siren in front of me that I could just press for when someone got mentioned a big empty ad. That's what that's what I was expecting. Um, but Dave, Dave, Dave dropped the empty ad. You got a free preview bomb. suspension. <laughs> Matt, mate, I'm uh, I'm doing well in the team selection, mate. My rating is uh, eight point nine after ten appearances. So I'm listen. I think I'm eight point eight. Hang on, hang on. Eight point nine after eight appearances. Let's not get too carried away. We're well, doing predicted. Well, then, we're doing it's, it's predicted elevens next. Okay, guys, let's get straight back into it. Talk predicted elevens. Who is going to play against Manchester City in the derby this weekend? Dave, what's your team? 
as much as I would love to start Marouane Fellaini and really <laughs> scare Man City from the off. Go completely direct to Man City at attacking midfield. Have someone behind, like a Sanchez, running in behind. City Fernandinho literally could not deal with that. We've seen you know, players that have uh, played against Marouane Fellaini in bigger games that haven't dealt with it. But I don't think Mourinho is going to do that. And I think I'm going to go with what Mourinho is going to do. I think David De Gea is going to start in goal. A back four, Luke Shaw, of course, Young, Smalling and Lindelof. You know, shout out to Victor Lindelof, man. He's been so good the last month. He's been the player that we've wanted him to be. He looks a lot more sure about himself when he's making his decisions in the penalty area now, which was one... I was a little bit worried about that when he sort of signed for United. I knew he was good on the ground, good at dealing with uh, balls into feet. But now I think he's kind of in the penalty area. He's now calm, which is good. Into midfield, I'd like to see Fred Herrera Pogba, but we're not going to see that. We'll see Matic at defensive midfield. We'll see Herrera as a right central midfielder, who's been great last two games. And of course, Paul Pogba as a left central midfield. And a front three, I kind of expect Juan Mata to come back into the team. Sanchez through the middle, Anthony Martial on that left hand side. But the impact that. Rashford brought off the bench, the impact that Jess Lingard could bring off the bench and the big one, Maran Fellaini. It's kind of good that United have got these options now to change the game. I think that's something that Mourinho will do and will cause City problems when, if it's needed. And, you know, of course, United probably win 3 0, 4 0 before that. Okay, so Fellaini won't be leaded. We'll keep him on the bench. Don't say it. You know it's going to get clipped up and taken out of context. Uh, right, uh, that one's Dave's team. <laughs> I'm just looking at the table now, seeing who's, who's towards the top. Uh, cheeky spot, Dave's in there, 9.5. Dale 9.2. Hold on, don't just skip past the brown, man. Why, Mo Butt is top of the oh, league. Oh, yes, I miss Mo Butt, top of the league with 10. That's How very spot. Dave. It's that man, Dave, on 8.9. Can he improve that? Where are you? 8.5. 8.5. Uh, that's not too bad. Ahead of you. That's not too bad. What are you saying then? What's your team? Are they... Oh, no, I was going to say something. Anyway, moving on. Um, What's your team? David De Gea in goal. Um, Ashley Young at uh, right back. Um... I think this could be a game for Ashley Young and Luke Shaw, you know. Um, I think City will obviously attack quite a lot. And I think Ashley Young and Luke Shaw could be vital to us. If they have a good game, we could have a good game. Then in the middle, um, Smalling and Lindelof again. Um, Lindelof, like Dave said, has been pretty good for United recently. Um, he's coming into his own now. Now, hopefully we can get someone playing well alongside him. Because Smalling's had a little dip at that same time. Not saying he was bad against Juventus, because he did all right. But... Um, he has been inconsistent They've at the time with Lindelof. Along, they yeah, all of them, them have. It's all of them. Um, <laughs> then it'll, it'll likely be Nemanja Matic again, mm -hmm. um, which again I question. But we've seen Jose Mourinho seems to rely on him. And I thought I thought he was dreadful in the first half, got booked mm. and everything. But in the second half, he did improve a little bit yeah. um, against Juventus. Then ahead of them, um, Herrera has to keep his spot in the team. Um, obviously, Paul Pogba will as well. I thought Paul Pogba... He tried to make things happen against Juventus and nothing really came off for him. He didn't have the greatest of games. Um, but when the whole team plays well, we can afford to have Paul Pogba in there trying to make things happen. Yeah. It's when the team performs badly and then he's trying to do those things and we're just yeah. giving the ball away that it looks worse than it is. Um, but I hope he's a lot better. We've seen what he'd done there last season. Um, so hopefully we can have a repeat performance. I think we're going to see uh, Jesse Lingard again um, start on the right. Um, with, with the same front three, Sanchez and Anthony Martial. Anthony Martial, I thought that was his best performance uh, this season for United against Juventus, even though he scored goals shot. elsewhere and in other games. Yeah, I agree um, with that. I thought, I thought he was fantastic against Chelsea as well, but in his all-round play, um, mm. in terms of... Con and when you look at the players he was playing against as well, mm. these weren't just, you know, this weren't... I know we got some very good defence in the Premier League, but this was the best. It was Chiellini, Bonucci, all them like, and you look at that and you're thinking, for him to do that, you got to have some balls and you got to have some confidence. And he was twisting up everybody. He put Sandro on his ass just before he won the free kick. Quadrado got skinned. Like, it was great to watch. And he was doing it going that way as well. Winning the ball just, back, winning free just kicks a, in his no own joke, area. Mate. He's no joke. A little point on that. The only thing I think United need to deal with tactically is how to allow Martial to stay on the counter-attack. I think that was a big thing against Juve that kept on coming with Quadrado 1v1 with Luke Shaw. And Quadrado is the type of player that has a trick in him, has a skill in him, that you don't want to have someone 1v1. And I think United can slightly change maybe some of their setup in terms of how they deal with one player going over every, every single time. It pretty much falls on the responsibility of Paul Pogba. Pogba's got to be that guy that if City attacked down their right-hand side, 
he's got to be out there you helping out. You could possibly have um, uh, Alexis Sanchez do do that role because Alexis Sanchez naturally does drop deep anyway. So if when we're in defence, if Anthony Marshall stays as the highest man up the pitch and Sanchez comes back, it works. But I think he's shown a willingness to to do it. So I don't think it's such a problem. And like I've been saying all along, play this boy week in, week out, Mate, you know, and he will deliver. Every time he's been taken out of the team, I don't necessarily think he deserved to be, so it is good to see him finally consistently in that starting 11. Uh, just be aware as well that before recording this video, or shall we say at the time recording this video, Jose's press conference hasn't happened yet, so maybe he'll say some things which will compete, completely cancel out some of our teams, but either way, just letting you know. Might call uh, me a wanker. Maybe, maybe. Imagine that if he just came out and was like, Adam McCullough weapon uh, right agree, Alex what, what's your city it'll be the best thing he's ever said in a press conference to be honest Alex what's your city team for the uh, for the game against us then what's happening what what Stockport schleppers are you playing <laughs> cheers mate thanks um, Edison in goal I reckon uh, everyone in Stockport's uh, going to hate me now they already do guys are we still doing this go on right. sorry <laughs> sorry mate sorry mate go on no, it's all right. It's sort of cool for. Uh, right, Edison in goal. I reckon we go for a back four. Uh, Walker, I think you uh, will probably have Mendy return at left back. Uh, Vincent Company, you've got to start him in a derby. Absolutely loves it. Uh, and probably John Stone is paired. Although that centre back pairing has changed all season. Uh, Fernandinho sitting in front of back four. De Bruyne and David Silva, you've got to get them up from the pitch. Uh, and we played Mares and Sterling. Uh, in the week so we're going to guess I'm going to go for Bernardo Silva and Sane uh, behind Sergio Aguero up from what what what, what not heard of any whoa, of them players whoa, mate whoa, not whoa, heard whoa. of them it must be rubbish oh crap then. so Sterling won't you don't think Sterling will start is that what you think I, or what you want generally from the Champions League uh, Pep has played different wingers <laughs> in the Champions League to, at the week, league at the weekend um, Sterling did play 90 oh, whereas other players were arrested but what, the thing is with Raheem Sterling regardless of penalties and the rest of it um, he has scored 17 goals this season and he's been in absolutely incredible yeah. form and I think that's that's very very hard to not play that in so one of the biggest games of the season he scored um, one of his best ever goals as well in, in the Champions League this week I know this is the City vs United preview I'm not going to do it, actually. Go on. No, I just think, like, Raheem Sterling's got 17 goals this season and people still talk shit about I this know. guy. Like, he's got so <laughs> many... Like, I'm not going to lie. There was one point in time when I said I wouldn't even swap Yanazai for Sterling. And, like, to see this geezer do it week in, week out for club and country at the top level and still get disrespected. You need, I hope he has an awful game on, on the weekend, but... Just put some respect on him. And name. you know what, right? Let him buy his mama kitchen if he wants this to. Is, yeah, yeah right. Like, this is the City United preview, and we're not here to praise too many City players. But uh, in the papers this morning, we've seen in one particular paper at the back, they were trying to sort of like slag off essentially the whole of Manchester. And um, what? How did it go? The front cover did it say like no class? No class. And then Raheem Sterling above and it, and Jose Mourinho below it. And I was like, I mean, for the paper that said it as well, a like, newspaper pot that kettle. Come on. Really, really. Um, sorry, Alex. Did you complete your team then, mate? Yes, I did. Yeah, uh, when you're Aguero up front, I, nice one, lads. I know you don't win with class, but you certainly do a preview with one. I like that. That was nice. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take we won't. That. Don't worry. We'll be giving you abuse if we beat you on Sunday. Well, that dive midweek, disgusting. Calling the referee, <laughs> getting a free penalty. Really important goal in the game, that as well. It wasn't like City won 6 0 or something. Uh, <laughs> Lovely yeah. little bit of balance. Outrageous challenge from the, uh, the grass there, but uh, that's where football goes. No place for it in football. Uh, it was grim. I no, don't know like that, loads. If Harry Kane did that, they'd be saying, what a clever bit of play by the yeah. Englishman. If Harry Kane did that, <laughs> like, if Harry Kane did that, they'd be slagging off the grass. They'd Sterling like, oh. did it. The Jamaican man diving again. <laughs> 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 right, um, let's uh, let, let's go a little bit more in detail about Man City then. Alex, uh, who are your danger men going into this? Who are you putting all your weight behind to uh, get the goals and, and win you the derby? Uh, from City's point of view, yes. like City players. Uh, obviously, Sergio Aguero is the main man. Rested midweek, has looked uh, as strong as ever this year. And I think he's scored more goals against Manchester United than any City player in history. Um, I'm yes. certainly back to do it again. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, look, I'll be back and see it again this week. Um, I think, like I said, Raheem Sterling's been um, in tremendous form. I really, really, really want to see him get on the pitch. But Sterling's been absolutely wonderful uh, this season and last season. Um, but the one criticism that I have of him as a City fan is he quite often goes 
sort of missing in those big, big games. And I'd love to see him grab the headlines on a massive occasion because everyone loves to give still a little bit of stick and it would be nice to see him just have an undeniable like big day on his on his CV, you know, and go, look, that was the derby, that was Raheem Sterling's derby. Um, there's one or two players across the pitch that I think Fernandinho has been immaculate uh, this year. And I think a few City fans were saying before the summer break that maybe Fernandinho was on his last legs. Uh, and actually, he's, you know, it's been a renaissance. He got rested. Uh, he came out, you know, he uh, got... All the same, he got substituted in midweek, which means he's got. Oh, a wait, I was, wait, I was, I was confused. Then he got arrested. When, when did that yeah. happen? <laughs> well, he didn't hear about it because it wasn't Raheem Sterling, so it was. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, yeah, he, got, he, got, uh, he only played seventy minutes midweek, so he should be fresh. And you know what? If we talk about uh, Maran Flaney and players like that earlier in the uh, earlier in the preview, Fernandinho is more than equipped to dominate midfield, and I would really, really back Maran Flaney. Though, anyway. Alex, let's not be silly. Aerially, that is going to be a problem for you guys. Fernandinho versus Fellaini is going to be a bit of a trouble. You guys well, are just that's pissing what, everyone that's off. That's for. And we could also talk about, you know, Vincent Company scoring against United on not one but two occasions with his big massive dome. What uh, happened the last now, time he scored though, Alex? Because that was an interesting game, wasn't it? Do you know what? That, I, that derby. You know, fair <laughs> He's a good video again. Could be four or five. No, don't, 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 don't. <laughs> That's my. I think that. I think that might be one of my favourite derbies ever. When when United came back, because I sat in my seat and I was absolutely like I was gutted. Then the final whistle went, and I was like, oh, I don't care because we're going to win the league next week. Bollocks! Bollocks! I'm glad it's you in that house. Did Did you tweet in the first half? <laughs> I didn't tweet. It was over. You definitely put some tweets at half time. Yeah. In, was it right? In 2008, when we won the league and the Champions League, that was the season that these lot beat us twice, won it? We, right, I'll be completely honest now. I wasn't sitting there going, oh, I'm not bothered that City beat us twice. We've, won the, the, we've, we've won the league and the Champions anniversary League. One, I, was still, I was still annoyed when it happened. Don't pretend I, you weren't arsed. Honestly, I walked out of that, that stadium. I walked out of that stadium. I went to go see the arcade fire afterwards. Everybody else was moaning. I thought, you know what? This, this is how the power has shifted. The United fans in the stadium were letting off flares and going absolutely nuts. And you we're celebrating that you'd ruined our day and that was the biggest thing you'd achieved all season was that you'd ruined our day and as a City fan where for most of my life we saw City the tears been Alex the small, the, been the, the, tears. Like the smaller team we've been like the underdogs in the derby and we know that when we've beaten you in the derbies before it's not affected your season but it's been like the pinnacle of our lives and it was just sort of that derby represented the power shift in Manchester and the fact that suddenly United are celebrating about ruining our day because well, they know they had no Alex doubt. you thought about this a lot aren't you it's it's a power shift <laughs> get three more European cups <laughs> Alex <laughs> you sound like you FFP, spent at least a week just... City. they don't care but just come, 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 come back when you've won 20. Years ago. You know, you could do whatever you want with money, but if you play by the rules, it's oh, a lot shit. harder. I just love I, I, I just love how long Alex spent then trying to convince us that he doesn't care about something. <laughs> like you've, you've defeated the object now. Uh, right. Sorry, I, couldn't, I can't hear you guys over the sound of uh, Dave being like, Triggered, just unbelievable. Like, ah, yeah, we don't follow the rules. Financial fair play. I oh, give over. Like United have been cheating for decades. I was gonna say. What? I mean, we've 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 been uh, every single of the seasons for FFP. We've been fine. We haven't had to backdate any checks or anything like that. I'll do any some dodgy moves where you pump money through a country and then through a company and then it goes to Manchester City and everyone's like, oh what? And that's what? not even mentioning the human rights abuse. Exactly. Sorry. If we stop talking about City, I have a feeling this might get violent. Uh, let's just get score predictions in to finish. Obviously, United this week beating, beating Italy's most corrupt club and now coming up against England's. What's the score going to be? I think after the win against Juventus, we're all going to be going into the... Oh, it's going to be a draw, 1-1. One, one. <laughs> mate, I was going to say that, nil-nil. Statman Dave, what are you saying, mate? It's not going to be nil-nil. United nil. looking <laughs> in 2-1 this season. Um, you know, did it in Turin, did it against Everton, did it against Bournemouth. I think now we're going to do it against Manchester City with Marouane Fellaini scoring the winner. Alex, what are you saying? Alio, 3-1 City. Uh, City to score first. I do think as well, United going to Turin and pulling out the bag there. Uh, as much an achievement as that is, City on a nice 6 0 win at home. I think generally a little bit of jet lag, a little bit of uh, fatigue or something. going to Italy. City in the form that they're Shows in. Shows you they've only been in Europe a year. I don't know where Italy is. <laughs> Beat a Shaq to the Nets team without Fred. Easy, anyone could do that. Okay, all the scores are in, all the teams are in, uh, and we are about time to wrap up the preview. Uh, Adam, guys, thank you very much for joining us. Have you, you know, heard about our new WhatsApp group, guys? Do we have a new WhatsApp group, Adam? Yeah, man. Click the link in the description below and you can join the WhatsApp group. Now, this, this is what happened to me. I thought 
there's going to be about a million people in there doing my editing with notifications. It's oh, not, not the like, case. Oh, it's I not might, a group like I that. Might get it, you though. just get messages from full time Devils producer Chris when he's got stuff to tell you and nudes to send. <laughs> really? Do you get Chris nudes? Maybe. Oh, right, I'll get straight on a million straight subs. Away. Uh, guys, thank you very much for watching today. I'll be at the game on Sunday. All the usual Day off for me. after it. He's wagging it. Unless I get a ticket. He's terrified. Unless I get a ticket. Catch you next time. See you in a bit. Laters.